the world is on fire, but at least my lipstick choices are better. It's not a liquid, it's not a cream, what is it? Is she me, am I she, I am. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of green and I hear you, I respect your opinion, but respectfully, I've been loving green lately. <laughs> I have been having so much fun with the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette. I just like, I reach for it every day. I think it is so, so fun. I just, I keep finding more color combos that I like to use. Also, it pairs so nicely with the It's Freaking Bats palette. You guys, I was really patting myself on the back earlier this morning. I was like, you know what? I bought a lot of makeup recently, but I've been using all of it. So you know what? If I'm gonna spend a lot of money on makeup, at least I'm getting use out of it. But that's not what this video is about. Out. You did not come to this video to listen to me humble brag about how much use I've been getting out of my makeup. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in reacting to my 2019 makeup favorites. So I uploaded a video last Wednesday reacting to my 2018 makeup favorites because that was the first year I was on YouTube. And that video was really fun because 2018 was the first full year that I really got into makeup. So a lot of my favorites from that year were really just steps in my makeup routine that I was doing for the first time. Like I talked about the Physicians Formula Bronzer. I hate the Physicians Formula Bronzer. But today we're talking about my 2019 favorites. And I uploaded this video, I believe the first of the year. I had just taken a break from YouTube for like three months because I got a case of being sad. So this is my first video back. So it's a little cringy. It's a little rough. There's like a beeping noise in the background the whole time. I don't necessarily recommend watching it, but I'll probably include a few clips here and there because I said some pretty outrageous things about some products that I don't really like anymore. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to hear about me reacting to my 2019 makeup favorites, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching. It's coming at you right now. All right, so I got all my favorites written down on a notebook here. If you want to pause, you can just skip the whole video and watch them here. Please don't do that. Please watch the whole video. But this is exciting because I do have a couple of products that I still own, which in the last video, I only had one product. So improvement, great. Okay, so the first product I talked about in my 2019 favorites video was the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter for a Hollywood Superstar Youth Glow. And I actually still have that. It's right here. Look at her. She has no letters left on her. That's not true. She has a couple. My biggest gripe with this, and I mentioned that in that video, look how easily these letters wipe away. I just took one off. For this product, being $44, the letters should not wipe off so easily, Charlotte. But that's besides the point. We're talking about the product itself. I talked about my 2019 favorites video, how I like to use this as a primer under my foundation. That is still the way I like to use this. It's a nice glowy base. Although I haven't been reaching for it quite as much this year, just because as I feel like I've mentioned quite frequently on my channel, I've gotten a lot more pale this year. I have not seen the sun as much. I'm sure most of us can relate to that. Also, I've been wearing sunscreen every day, although I just like hadn't having a panic moment right now because I realized I didn't put sunscreen on this morning because I woke up before the sun came up. Oh my god, it's okay. I'll put sunscreen on after this, even though I already have my foundation on. Oh god, what a mistake I've made. I'm rambling. My point is that I've gotten a lot more pale this year, and this shade doesn't really work for me anymore. Granted, it's under makeup, so it's not that bad, and of course, like that doesn't look that bad. But you can see like the undertone when I go like this, it's a little bit of a warm undertone. I have the shade light two. I feel like I need light one. My other gripe with this product, actually I was gonna say a different gripe, but it doesn't fully screw on. It just goes around forever and ever and ever, which is ridiculous for a $42 product, Charlotte. But my other gripe with this product is that they do not have a good shade range. And granted, I know it's like a highlight, like it's not really like a foundation, but they come in foundation colors. And for if you're gonna offer highlights in a foundation color range, it at least gives some depth of range. Like this is her shade range. There's only seven shades. Clearly she is missing many shades on the deeper end. And something I wanna be better about on my channel is only talking about products that have a good inclusive shade range. Even if they have a shade for me, I don't wanna promote something that not everybody who watches my videos can use. So I really think that Charlotte should expand her shade range. What is this video about? Reacting to my 2019 favorites. I do still use it every once in a while. Definitely not as often as I did in 2019. I gave a nice glow 
glow, but I also feel like I can get the same glow with highlight over my foundation, so not a necessity for me anymore. Definitely no longer like a favorite favorite, just an acquaintance, and that's okay. Okay, this next favorite is really funny because I decluttered it like a month later. <laughs> I don't know why I said this was a favorite. I said that the Revlon Candid Foundation in the natural finish was a favorite. Like, what? This product was not a favorite. I mean, I guess, okay, at the time of filming, at the time of filming, it was a favorite for me. I'm not a fraud, but I, it's, it's no longer. I love the Revlon Candid Glow Foundation, although this is another one that doesn't have a great shade range, so I'm probably not gonna be talking about it so often anymore, but this is a great formula. The Revlon Candid Original is not a great formula. First of all, it smells like baby powder, and it took me a couple of months to realize this. I kept thinking another product I was wearing smelled like baby baby powder for some reason. Maybe it didn't smell like as much like baby powder when I put it on, but then throughout the day I would be like, oh, what does that smell? And I hate powdery smells. But aside just from the fragrance to it, it also oxidized horribly on my skin. One, the shade that I had was not my shade. I had shade 150, I'm shade 120. I'm the same shade in here. 150 was not my shade, so that's on me for buying a bad shade. But more so than it not being my shade, it would oxidize so orange on me, and by the end of the day, you would see like a clear line on my chin where the colors differed from my neck. Granted, I also wasn't blending down my neck in 2019. I blend down my neck now, although did I today? It's fine, don't worry about it. But yeah, this foundation was not a good shade match for me. It oxidized, it smelled bad. Honestly, it looked pretty cakey. It said it had a natural finish. I would argue it was more of a soft matte finish, but more of a soft matte cakey finish. And it's definitely not a foundation I like anymore. I mean, clearly I've decluttered it. So it's not a favorite. I don't like it at all. I don't know why I said this was a favorite. I think it was like the only foundation that I was actively using at the time. So this year I've tried a lot more foundations. Look out for my 2020 phase. I got a lot of good recommendations there, but the Revlon Candid Foundation in the Natural Finish is no longer a favorite. Oh my goodness, yet another decluttered product that I said was a favorite. Okay, so the next favorite I mentioned was the ColourPop Blush Stick in the shade Aloha. So I actually have somewhat of a similar reason to the Revlon Candid Foundation why I decluttered this, although this one, I loved the formula of this, and I still plan on trying the ColourPop Blush Sticks again. I wanna get a different color because this formula is beautiful. Beautiful. All of the chef's kisses. Buttery, creamy, easy to blend out, difficult to overdo, just such a user-friendly product. My big gripe with this product is that it oxidized. And like, have you guys ever heard of a blush oxidizing? I didn't even know that could happen, which is why I put off decluttering it for so long because I was like, no, it can't be the blush oxidizing. It's gotta be something else I'm doing. Something else has to be wrong. <laughs> Sorry for that dramatic reenactment of how I felt, but I just, it took me a long time Time to come to terms with that it was the blush that was oxidizing and it would oxidize orange on me so it would go on this beautiful neutral pinky peachy beautiful shade and then like two hours into the day I would catch myself in the mirror and be like did I not put blush on? Did I put bronzer all over my face? And why is my bronzer orange? So it just, it was not a good situation. It was not a great shade. Clearly there's something in the formula ColourPop's gotta work on. Either that or it's just my undertones. I have very cool undertones, so sometimes a lot of things can tend to pull orange on me and some things won't pull orange on somebody else that'll pull very orange on me. So just because the Aloha blush didn't work for me doesn't mean it couldn't still pull neutral on you. Just for me, it did not work and it's definitely no longer a favorite because I decluttered it. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I forgot I have another one. You guys, I have like three total products that I still have in my collection. Brag. The next product I mentioned in that video was the Milk Matte Bronzer Stick. So I have the shade Baked. It only comes in two shades, which milk, that is also a problem. I'm probably also not going to talk about this all that much because it's kind of a trash shade range. Like granted, they have a deeper shade, but when it comes to bronzer, come on, you need more shades than that. This product, it, I liked a lot at the time because it was was one of the first bronzers that I ever got that didn't pull orange on me. Remember, we're going back to the point that I made about everything pulling orange on me because of my cool undertones. This doesn't really pull 
orange on me, which is great. I'll swatch it for you. It's a nice, very neutral color. Definitely not a contour by any means. You can see it's got some warmth to it, but it's definitely a more neutral bronzer, which if you are a cool tone friend like me, then neutral tone bronzers are gonna be your best friend because they typically don't pull as orange. Now, I would say this was a favorite for 2020 just because I've been a lot more into powder bronzers this year. I've discovered a lot more bronzers that also don't pull orange on me. If I'm being quite honest, it's just a lot easier to apply a powder bronzer. I'm a fingers lady. I don't really use sponges. I use my fingers to apply my foundation and concealer, and I use a brush to apply my powder products. I don't really have a good brush for applying this, so when I do apply this, I use my fingers, but I find it very difficult to focus the placement on my cheekbones. My favorite bronzer brush for powders is this Eco Tools brush. Oh gosh, I don't know the name of it. I'll try to link it down below. This is a Raw Beauty Christie recommendation, the best recommendation she's given me. I love this brush. I use it for bronzer, I use it for contour, I use it for blush, I use it for everything. It's a great brush because it really can just hug your cheeks very nicely, especially if you have a more like round face like me. This brush is excellent, but I can't use it with this because I use it for powder products. Honestly, I don't know how it would do with this. I've never used this with cream products. And you know, you have your powder brushes, you have your cream brushes, and you don't really want to mix them because then I'd actually have to wash my brushes more often, and we don't like to do that around here. So I definitely haven't been reaching for this as much this year. It's not bad. It's just a little more high maintenance. Also, in the future, I would never buy a full size of this again because I've had this for like a year and a half now, I think. But look at how much product is in here still. I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to put it down. This is probably a bad idea. You get the picture. I'm gonna start turning it down now. It's, I have like the whole product. I barely made a dent in it. <gasps> oh, shoot. It's not going back down and the bottom fell off. Look at this though. Look how much product is in here. This is a bit obscene, you guys. I mean, I guess a good thing for your buck, obviously, but like, nice, I push it down with my hand. Okay, we're all good, crisis averted, but this is no longer a favorite, but it's definitely still something I like and use occasionally, but I'm just more into powder bronzers this year. Oh my God, look, I got bronzer on my notebook. <laughs> How fun, ugh, memories. <laughs> okay, so the next product I also have, this one actually is the only product that is still an active favorite of mine, and it's the Fourth Ray Beauty Glisten Up mist. So I use this as a setting spray. I also like to use this when applying my foundation and that's a tip that I got from Jackie Ina. What she does is she puts on her foundation like she dots it on her face and then she'll either spray the sponge or spray it directly onto her face and she said that helps her makeup last longer. Now granted this is not like a last longer <laughs> setting spray because there's no alcohol in it. There's nothing that provides longevity in this formula. It's really just like hydrating ingredients, has vitamin C in it, and it has like actual pearls in it. But I feel like it provides a little luminosity to my foundation. I especially love how it pairs with my Milk Flex Stick foundation. So that's a hot tip from me to you. And I still really love this setting spray. It's definitely still a favorite of mine. I've repurchased it multiple times. This is a different bottle than the one I had in that video. So that should tell you something. That's a repurchase for the ages. This is still a great favorite. I 10 out of 10 recommend the 4th Ray Beauty Glisten Up Mist. I forgot I had the bronzer on the back of my hand and I just keep putting my hand down and getting more bronzer everywhere. Oh my goodness. Recording in the morning is a real trip, you guys. It is 9.18. I know that doesn't sound that early, but I've been up for three hours. Actually, more like four hours because Mr. Burt decided it would be fun to get up at 4.30 in the morning today, and he wanted to play, but look who's sleeping now. He's a sweet boy, we all forgive him, it's okay. He's just very playful and just wants to play all the time. Okay, so moving on to a product that, wow, I still have, but don't use. So like, this is this is not a brag. The next product I talked about being a favorite of mine was the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume One Palette. This is how you know a product is very unloved in my collection when I put it behind my mirror where I forget it exists. Wow, this is heavier than I remember. Gotta give it to her there. This is really sturdy packaging. So, um, it looks a little different than it did in that video. Don't, don't get confused. This is not hitting pan. This was me scraping this with tweezers 
because I attempted to do a video a few months ago where I wanted to create my own faux freckle spray because I saw somebody on Instagram use L'Oreal Root Touch Up as like a spray freckle and I wanted to see if I could do it myself with setting spray. So I took a setting spray and I added a bunch of eyeshadow to it and then I sprayed my face, but it didn't look like freckles. It just looked muddy. So there's my big long backstory for you. But I didn't touch this palette after like March of this year. Not because because it's a bad formula like it's a perfectly fine formula I actually think her mattes are very nice it's so funny I talked about loving the sequin shades in my 2019 video the sequin shades are crazy they are so cool how often do I talk about how much I hate sequin shades now granted Tati's are way better than the ColourPop ones the ColourPop ones can kick rocks the Tati Beauty ones can kick pebbles like we still don't like them but they're better than the ColourPop ones because they don't have huge chunks of glitter in them they're just kind of shimmery and they actually the shimmer does show up if you just pack it on your lid but that's besides the point because I don't really touch this palette at all the glitters are way too chunky these are glitters that'll scratch your lids when you take them off and I'm just not into that I'm not even really that all that into glitter in general but I did recently discover the Midas Cosmetics flower bomb palette which has much more fine glitters which I am okay with these glitters are not my jam the shimmers in this palette are very unimpressive. I was never really into the shimmers in this palette, and I'll swatch one for you to show you why. They're fine, there's some shift there, but to me they're more of like a satin shimmer. Like, they're not what I look for in a shimmer. Okay, so I went to swatch another shimmer I like, but it's not a good color comparison. So I'm gonna swatch this shade Romance from the Zodiac Cosmetics Virgo palette, because that's kind of a similar shade, and I'll show you the difference and what I'm looking for. Like. Come on, look at that. This is what I look for in a shimmer. I need it to be so bright and beautiful and wet looking and the Tati Beauty ones just don't give me that. I don't reach for the glitters ever. It's also a neutral palette. And am I a neutral girl? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm a bright colors girl. I'm a green girl. So the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette is definitely no longer a favorite. Honestly, I'm probably gonna declutter it because I really don't reach for this at all. Like I said, I haven't reached for it since March. All right. So the next favorite I mentioned in my 2019 favorites video is one that I decluttered and don't own anymore. This is the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the shade Grease. Credit where credit is due, this was the first water activated liner I ever tried and I never would have discovered it if I weren't subscribed to my Ipsy Glam Bag Plus, which I think it was subscribed to until maybe January of this year. Honestly, it might've been December. I don't really remember. I'm not subscribed to Ipsy anymore, but they sent me this and I was very grateful because I was like, water activated liner, what is that? How does that work? It's not a liquid. It's not a cream. What is it? My dear friends, as you know, water activated liner is now one of my favorite substances on earth. I love water activated liners. I have a million of them at my disposal at all times. But the Suva one was my first and honestly the formula is not bad. I have just found brands that I like better than Suva. Quite frankly, Suva had some kind of shady business practices. I'm not going to get into it too much, but they had a whole scandal on Instagram where they said something that was offensive to indigenous people and when indigenous people called them on it they just kind of mocked them in the comments and that did not sit right with me especially when there's so many other brands that are owned by wonderful people and people that act really kindly and respectfully on their social medias there's just no need for me to purchase from a brand that does not act as respectfully and technically I never purchased from them Ipsy sent it to me but you know when you got brands like by Wops, which are run by like the sweetest people in the whole world there's just no need for me to purchase from Suva. So in conclusion, not a terrible formula, but not a great company and definitely no longer a favorite. Okay, and my last favorite of my 2019 makeup favorites video was actually a favorite that I mentioned in 2018, but it's not a favorite anymore. It is the ColourPop Luxe Lipstick in the shade What's Your Sign. If you watched my 2018 favorites reaction video, you know that this is no longer a favorite. It's been decluttered. I still really like the color. It is a really good nude on me. I believe I called it neutral in this video, but it's really more of a cool tone nude now that I look at it, especially the way I looked in this video. Here's a screenshot, here I am. What a look, very different. I know, who is she? Are they the same person? Is she me? Am I she? I am, and 
it's fine. Weird growth, you know? I really liked this shade at the time. I felt it was a great nude for me, and it's funny. I really like hammered in on how much I loved this formula in that video, which is suspicious because I don't. Well, at the time I did. You know, as I said in my last reaction video, there's certain formulas that you outgrow, you know? You might like it at the time. Like, I was not lying in this video. I did like this formula at the time, but I have discovered something better. ColourPop, at this time of filming this video, I either hadn't discovered or it didn't exist the ColourPop Luxe Velvet lipsticks, which are the chefs are all kissing because it is so, so good. I'll show it to you, I can't help myself. The ColourPop Luxe Velvet lipstick, I have the shade Virgo Moon, which is very different than this shade, but it's just so good. I don't know what this tells you, but it's a very good formula. It's not quite matte, but it's not a cream, it's just velvet. Velvet is the perfect way to describe this look. It gives you a very blurred effect on the lips. Ugh, it's just so pretty. Fine, I'll put it on. You convinced me my lip gloss is wearing off anyways. This is the supreme bullet lipstick formula to me. All bullet lipsticks should be like this. It's so comfortable. Ugh, I'm giving away my favorites. Stop giving away your favorites in the reacting to your favorites video. What was I talking about? I was talking about the ColourPop Cream Luxe Lipstick in the shade What's Your Sign. It's no longer a favorite. The formula is too slimy for me. It gives you a gross line on your lips throughout the day. This just isn't my vibe anymore. It's no longer a favorite. That was 2019. This is 2020, baby. The world is on fire, but at least my lipstick choices are better. Oh god. Okay, well yeah, that's this no longer a favorite. Alright, and with that we have reached the end of the video. Those are all of my 2019 makeup favorites and my reactions to such favorites. Let me know if any of the products I mentioned are products that were your favorites in 2019 or if they're still active favorites of yours. And I should have given this disclaimer in the beginning, but if I mention anything today in a negative way that you view in a positive way, try not to take it personally. I know it's hard, especially if you're a Pisces. I know, I know it's really hard. <laughs> Sorry, Pisces. I always razz on Pisces, but I love Pisces. You are one of my favorite signs. I love you guys so much, you little emotional babies. I love you so much. Yeah, try not to take any of it personally. We all have different preferences when it comes to makeup. You know, something might work great for you that doesn't work great for me, we all have different skin types, we all have different preferences. It's just such a beautiful big world, and I'm so glad that we're all so different. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know something about your day. I don't know. Talk to me in the comments. I love to talk to you guys in the comments. I've been getting more comments lately, and honestly, it's provided me so much joy. I love to chat with you, even if you just say hello. I'm happy to chat with you and say hi, and I just, you guys are all so sweet. Thank you so much for being so sweet. And if you made it to the end of the video and you haven't subscribed, what the heck are you waiting for? It's free, it's fun, it's fresh, it's good for your skin, it's good for your hygiene. I don't know what that means. You still have to wear deodorant, but I heard that your armpits get less smelly if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, so just keep that in mind. Also, check out my description box for everything on my face today, as well as a ton of Black Lives Matter resources. I have petitions to sign, places to donate, and ways to help protesters, so please click on those links if you haven't yet, and I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!